255 here. What up, Deep Minds? Let's talk about what's going on with Maury Jin and what the author is doing with his character. So, my first question is, is Maury literally eating these dragons? Because he literally appeared to eat Gaia. And she is supposed to be a creator. But if that's the case, it's a pretty crazy idea to have a protagonist eating his enemies. It's not something that would be strange if a villain did it. Villains eating people make sense. When we're little, we're scared of the boogeyman who's going to eat us. But Hero saved you from the villain that's eating you. But Mori, I guess, is now doing both. Especially with those devilish smiles that they have in, these, in two of these pictures here. Or maybe just excitement. I am looking forward to Mori Jin having all of the dragon bones because of this statement by this ultimate dragon here who says that each dragon bone has its own advantages. You have to learn each of them. And I'm just imagining this final scene between Betraya and Mori where Mori's got like six or seven of these sticks and he's using all these different weapons on top of his kicking and his martial arts, his renewal, Taekwondo, and he's just looking for like a very good action scene. I have a question, however, about the antagonist, the king or queen of dragons, the most deadly, wicked dragon here. And my question is, she gives Mori this information, saying that she has, that he has to learn each of these new techniques. However, as Hoshi would say, however, comma, <laughs> she's also saying that she's going to pour every drop of blood that Mori has into the earth. That's not something you say to your students. Or maybe she's pretending, I don't know. So I'm not sure if she wants to destroy Mori or she wants to teach him. The next thing of interest is Gaia herself. Is the dragon got really mad about that and she said how dare you a, a, a creature how dare a mortal eat their creator so it got me interested into Gaia so this next thing that I'm reading may be into spoilery uh, territory and maybe you have already picked up the fast pass so you're good but this may be a spoiler and I looked online and there is a God of High School wiki fan page and someone has a description of Gaia and it says here, racist species god, gender female, affiliation human realm, relative, prophets, descendants, generation X descendants. So chapter 184, flashback, and the person says, whoever wrote this, is that Gaia is the original goddess of the human realm, planet Earth. Before the gods of the heavenly realm killed her and assumed her role and authority for their own benefit. She was probably the oldest of all known deities, apparently having existed since the time of the dinosaurs or even earlier, possibly being the creator of the planet itself. In some way, his existence has managed to endure through his descendants, the so-called prophets like Tang Zengang, as well as the young people belonging to Generation X like Dean. These descendants have the ability to transfer their powers between them becoming more powerful. They are the only human beings with the potential to surpass the gods. If a god or demon devours one of these descendants alive, they will gain a series of abilities and powers that have not yet been fully specified. So, that's a little bit of background about Gaia and a little bit of background about Generation X, what their purposes are. I'm not going to go too much more into that, but that seems like a pretty deep storyline in and of itself, and that's one of the things I love about God of High School. So we'll see what's going on with that next week. All right, Hardcore Leveling Warrior is back, and aren't we all happy to see it? Interesting, the author decided to bring him back with the Master Devil Nightmare. I'm not completely sure why he did this. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a, a good reason for it. Maybe to mix things up. Maybe 
hardcore leveling warp is going to need the power up. But I think it's an interesting choice here by the author to mix him up because honestly, we all loved Ethan just the way he was. He was the hardcore leveling warrior. He's a jerk. He's all powerful. He's not all powerful just by being powerful. He's all powerful because he's intelligent. But yet, the author still wanted to bring him back on this OP level. So we're happy to see him. I'm just interested in where this is going to go. I know that in the comments, some people have suggested that there's another world and maybe he's going to lead, need that power for that. We'll see what's going on. And this is very interesting. I mean, I don't know where you go from here, but he's already at level one and his stats are all 999. <laughs> Hardcore loving warrior. I guess he couldn't just return as the hero. Maybe he will. Maybe he's plotting to get revenge, but this is very interesting that he has him deep an enemy ground. Now, there's so many theories. Now, in the comment section, someone suggested that Hardcore Levy Warrior is not this guy that we're seeing here, although it looks like I'm pretty sure. Someone was even going so far as to suggest that this is Hardcore Levy Warrior. <laughs> But uh, I'm not so sure about that. But it's an interesting theory. That that would be more interesting than anything else. Now, look at this, right? Hardcore Lovely Warrior is using a bone versus Sora's sword. A bone to stop it. Like, the author really wanted to impress us with just how much more powerful Hardcore Lovely Warrior is. There may be new enemies coming that's going to require him to have this much power. Also, maybe Hardcore Leveling Warrior has this new Devil Master power to keep him from easily being killed. Especially with the wars going on, it might be harder for him to level up. But that doesn't completely make sense because other people are still coming into Lucid Adventure and they're joining. But there would be a big target on his head. So maybe that's one of the reasons why the author decided to bring him back over power instead of watching us grow him build his power back up for the third time. I think that also would have been just as interesting. I sincerely don't think that the author is going to make Hardcore Leveling Warrior the villain, because who's gonna be his replacement? Stone and Dark? I mean, they have a lot of great characters, but there's only one Hardcore Leveling Warrior, so I don't see how that will work, but anything's possible and I'm not the author. Now, this next panel has me a little confused because I'm trying to figure out why does the nightmare version of Sora hate hardcore leveling warrior so much? If you have, if maybe I missed something in a past chapter, but if you have any idea as to why that is, please leave that in the comment section below. Now, maybe what's going on with Nightmare Sora is that since the nightmare is the reverse personality of the original, that instead of loving nightmare, that instead of loving Hardcore Loving Warrior, like Sora does, she hates him instead as a manifestation of the opposite. Now, I didn't read that the Nightmare's personalities are reversed, but I'm just assuming that since they're their opposites. And now, but definitely not least, we have our final Webtoon discussion podcast, Gosu. Is it because of the Dan? Whenever I get emotional, I feel like the power was unleashed uncontrollably. I don't think that Gosu, not Gosu, Doko Young, I don't think that Doko Young, our protagonist here, really needed this Dan power, unless the author is planning on introducing enemies that are gonna go well beyond just the regular martial arts like Hebi was with this demon reincarnation. I personally liked Doko Young just as a martial artist and that power ever increasing, but I guess if he's planning on expanding this in series and in a much longer fashion and adding greater enemies that his data is going to be needed. Otherwise, hopefully it'll be destroyed and that'll be the end of it. But I'm willing to go wherever the author wants to take it. Right. We become like heavy. All right. Ocha B, I cannot, uh, Ocha OB, I cannot pronounce the name, so he's gonna be Ocha OB, and you're gonna hate me, whatever the case is, but we're gonna get through it. Um, 
are very interesting here what they do with this enemy. He kind of pulls this move. If you have not read the Dragon Ball Super comic <coughs> or manga, I am going to suggest you stop listening now. But what the author chose to do was to essentially let this character pull a Moro. I haven't read the DB Super manga either but it was revealed at some point that it looks like Moro gets younger and that's exactly what happens here the author um, has this antagonist become younger now I don't know if he plans on keeping him around or is it to show the power of Doko Young and these other two more powerful gentlemen or if he plans on making this new guy a uh, stronger long time protagonist because most of these enemies in Gosu they either become friends of Doko Young or they die but I can't imagine the uh, author putting this much energy into our new villain as you can see here without also planning to make him either a, a prolonged villain or making him a, a, a new partner but that's probably not going to fly because Dumpling Boy here doesn't do well with people who've been involved with killing his master. And that's also a question, right? Is the villain telling the truth or is he lying? I'm not really sure. I would love to know what you think. Anyway, those were the main parts of Gosu. Great action clips here. I really love this next panel, <laughs> right? Emphasize the point. I am literally trying to kill you. And at first, when I saw this next clip coming up, like right here, I, I thought that was his arm, but then I looked close, it was like his ribs. He was really trying to pull that Dan out. It was like he had enough power to stick his effing fingers inside of his body and rip out, I guess, his organs in that Dan. That was pretty, that's pretty crazy. 